because this is what we want to happen, this is our vision for the area, which people can generally sign up to. But when it comes down to actually looking at individual pe the individual detail of size of people's flats, tenure, compensation arrangements and so forth, that's always after planning consent's been given. And, and it's when the details start to be worked out to try and implement the macro picture. And they found that the original um, uh, promise of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a wonderful place uh, uh, simply becomes difficult to deliver when they get into the uh, so-called viability assessment. Yes, viability assessment, a whole other issue. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <coughs> uh, maybe I could just bring in another question since we're talking about macro picture. <coughs> and that's something else that, that also is related to the development you're talking about and that people um, in just space are very concerned about, and that's the opportunity areas. This is an opportunity area. We've now been <coughs> become part in Hackney of an opportunity area, the city fringe opportunity area. And people are very concerned about, uh, well, the, the lack of consultation um, in, first of all, determining the 38 opportunity areas that already exist in London. Um, before uh, the, the, the plan for, uh, for the city fringe um, was published in December 2015. The consultation was in December 2014. It wasn't a consultation as in the normal planning setup. There wasn't a long process and an uh, examination in public there was really very little publicity about it at all. And I just found out about it from a friend that I sent in a, a, a submission. I've no idea what they thought of the submission because there was no discussion about it. Um, but the opportunity areas um, are said to be on brownfield sites. Well, they're not. They're on sites where people live and people work already. Um, the city fringe opportunity area is um, the, the way it's described, and it's 109 pages, is it's an adjunct to Tech City um, which, and the, the city itself. Um, and the only way in which the current inhabitants are described is as possible providers for the new incoming richer people who are going to be living in the area. That's the only way they're described. There's one reference to our housing estates and they're described as if they're a nuisance because they're in the way of the further development northward of the city fringe area. Now that's just the opportunity area I know about. So, um, and I know that there are opportunity areas where there are very great concerns by the people who are involved in their development. So I would, I would like to ask the GLA to make a proper study of the opportunity areas, not to, to urge the mayor, not to, uh, uh, appoint any more opportunity areas until the, pr until the proper study has been made and find out the effects they have on the people who already live and work there and whether they actually deliver on what they say they're going to deliver. Because m from what I can see, even though the, uh, our opportunity area plan was only published in December, already the things in the plan are actually not being delivered. For example, it, it talks about um, uh, co-working areas for, for people. Uh, so there was a co-working area, it was set up in 2013 in a place called the Trampery. 30 fashion designers were in there. Now the, the rent has been increased 400% and they've all had to leave. So as I say, the, some of the things that are, were in that plan that was only pu uh, published in December uh, are not achievable. And so that, uh, what, that's... What, what's the answer then? I mean, a lot of these states are old. They do need work doing to them. How, how actually do we go around it? I mean, you've got the bigger picture. Uh, mm -hmm. I had with the council, for example, I said, well, okay, we have the bigger picture. You then have the planning application and, and so forth. Then, to my mind, there should have been a re-ballot of the residents at the end. Re-consultation, not uh, re-ballot. Well, I was mine. It's not a referendum. No, a well, I, my, view, my argument was there should have been a re-ballot because there was a ballot to kick the thing off in the first place while people voted for it. And what they finally offered at the end of the process wasn't at all what they voted for in the beginning. Okay. So the only way to test that would be to have a rebalance and see if people actually want what's now on offer. Yeah. I don't know if that, if, if, what, what do you think about that? I think that's an excellent idea. And uh, the problem is that everything can be subverted, of course. The, the ballot should be with the genuine questions about the genuine situation and not some kind of flowery um, sort of development or, or description of it. May I say, since you are here, from seven days. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, there's a, a document being produced about the Soundings consultation on the Elephant and Castle estate, and it raises a whole number of concerns about people spending hours and hours, years in fact, being consulted, taking part in uh, uh, sort of big meetings and you know being asked questions and so on, and at the end of it, none of their points being taken into account at all. And that's the sort of consultation that we really could do without, because it, it, it doesn't, um, well, it's not consultation in any real sense, is it? No, it well, is well, a, a fig leaf, a cover-up. Well, I mean, it's, it's information exchange, uh, information dissemination, rather than information gathering and, and acting on it. Yes, and <coughs> even very selective information exchange, because people are only given a certain amount of information. The amount of information that the developers, whoever is paying for the uh, consultation, um, want them to have. And in this case, something was paid for by the developer. Well, Are you can I respond to that? Yes. yes. Um, I think um, the, the key point that uh, that document raises is the uh, loss of social rented on the Hayfield estate. Um, so it goes back to my earlier uh, point in that when we were appointed, which was post um, most of these decisions were appointed by Lendlease after the signing of the Re Regeneration Agreement with Southwark Council, um, where they, they had made a commitment to the council about a level of affordable housing that they were providing. It was not something we were to consult on. That was our brief. Um, I would say that the consultation was very much focused around the design of the, the, of the new development. And in that design, I'm sure that would probably contradict me here, I do think there were some significant changes made by the local residents through the consultation process um, around aspects such as retention of trees, or partial retention of existing trees and so on. These are not the issues that really mattered to people, mm. but we recorded those issues when they were raised and we did reflect those in our, uh, in our documentation that formed part of the planning application. We were not in a position, we, we communicated those, we put the residents in front of the people that uh, were the decision makers on this project, whether it be the project director at the, at the developer. Uh, we also had senior members of the council come down um, and speak to the residents at, at, at these meetings. Um, so the, that connection between what the residents were feeling and what the residents wanted in the local community to the decision makers was there. Um, we created that, we facilitated that process um, obviously, I know that we're, we're being taken some of the blame for this, but we facilitated a process that we hoped would change things. Now, we, the aspects that we were asked to consult on, which were design aspects, I, I do feel that we did make some changes. I think there was, the developer could have done more, but we did make some changes that, uh, that are being built out there. So, what you're saying is that the parameters within which you were required to consult made a difference so it was it was more what you were asked to do i.e. the premises that you were set were for, rather than the consultation itself mm -hmm. yes okay which is a different story really okay. are you finished with your question then? Nevin, you must come yeah I, I just wanted to come in and uh, just, just uh, submit a comment